full screen. It got How long are we going to duck He was these? leaning in to see the numbers. All right, now show the numbers. <laughs> now we can show the actual numbers. All right, that's Mac versus Baker. I like Baker. Mac has fewer touchdown passes and more obviously blatantly dirty plays, as you see in the bottom column. It's 3 nothing. <laughs> but how does Mac, Greg, have fewer touchdown passes this year than Baker? Those passing yards. Who's on his second team and has played half as many games. Yeah. How is Mac at nine touchdown passes? Baker's surging, so, though. Yeah, yeah, Baker Two is good surging. Quarterbacks. And Teddy, on the other hand, Greg, if Teddy... Bridgewater's your quarterback to start the season. You're looking for your next quarterback. I understand that. But Teddy's fine. And I think Teddy right now is more equipped to have a great game than Mac Jones, who hasn't had a great game since In, uh, early last year. Huh? He hasn't had a great game since early in his rookie season. out there throwing darts last year. Okay, week. yeah. So, th- I would – I, I think it's Teddy Bridgewater. I trust him more, Greg. Yeah, I trust Teddy Bridgewater more, too. He's more accurate. Uh, he has more experience. Uh, he's played in the postseason again. We saw him a few years ago fill in for Drew Brees with New Orleans, and they didn't skip a beat. And why was that? Because Sean Payton had established an offense around what Teddy does, does well. He hasn't been afforded that opportunity yet, and now he finally will against your beloved Patriots. Mm. And so going into this game, Teddy Bridgewater will have finally been able to have a playbook and a scheme that fits and suits him. And a week of practice. And a week of practice, giving him all the talent. Like, they have better weapons than the Patriots. That's true. Mm -hmm. Uh, Better play caller. No the, question about it. Uh, I'll, give you that one. Scheme. I'll give you that one. Yeah. You're, you're two oh, thank you. right now. You're two thank you. Keep going. And they, and they have the better quarterback. Well, let's see about that. You have to let's see. I'm telling you they do. Like, if Teddy Bridgewater was re- available and Mac Jones was available, you would take Teddy Bridgewater. I would not. That's yes. incorrect. So you went to the uh, uh, one for stop three. There's three for one there. Uh, here's what I am excited for. History is on our side. Obviously, I trust Mac Jones. Can I show you the full screen? Mac Please. after back-to-back losses. Oh, my gosh. Is that a perfect record? 3-0? and It seems like Bill Belichick doesn't like to lose too much three, and, three games in a row. And he goes out there and cooks. Here's the other reason. I thought it was going to be frigid in Foxborough. It's actually going to be a nice 55. I might break out my polo shirts to watch the game, Nick. And finally, mm-hmm. our defense, Greg, which Teddy Bridgewater has to throw against, far better than Miami's Steve passing defense, which is giving up the fifth most yards, 245. So I expect Mac Jones, who played great in the second half, once Matt Patricia let him throw the ball a little bit, was on pace for 400 yards if the game went into a full half of overtime. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, he played well in the cooking. second half, and they and the, after Burrow threw the pick six, the Patriots had some juice. That is actually an interesting full screen. The fact that the Patriots are scoring 34 a game after back-to-back losses in three instances. That is is noteworthy over the last couple years. And I give Belichick and crew credit for that because 34 a game with only four passing touchdowns total and 230 passing yards doesn't even seem like it should be possible, but it's it, but it's what uh, they're doing. Complimentary football. No, yeah, that's what oh, I'm saying. Oh. And probably some defensive scores. I'm not – no, I'm giving you – I'm trying to give you credit here, buddy. <laughs> but uh, not Mac Jones credit. The, no, but the, the point that I, I want I, – I made this point a couple days ago. I just want to reiterate to the audience that Teddy has not had a real shot in Miami yet this year. Teddy's first game, he came in mid-game when Tua got hurt. Mm -hmm. His second game, which was the one time he had the full week of practice, he was named the starter, he He got got hurt hurt on the opening drive. His third game, he was in concussion protocol all week. So it's not only that he didn't get Mm -hmm. the starter reps, he got no practice reps. He was was the backup quarterback. Then Skylar Thompson got hurt. Teddy had to come in, and he threw for 300 yards. So I do think that element of it for the Dolphins, they have real reason for optimism, not just for this game, that if they win this week and the Jets lose this week, they're locked into the playoffs, but that they could actually be somewhat dangerous if they get into the playoffs with Teddy playing. The, I, I do want to ask you one question. I'm not trying to throw your guy Mac Jones under the bus. If Max terrible against the Dolphins and they're eliminated, because you mentioned the Dolphins don't have a great pass defense. If he's bad against the 
Dolphins, and then we know you guys have had very poor luck, we'll call it, against the Bills the last few years. Um, and you end the year limping to the finish line losers of four consecutive games. Will that be enough for you, America's only you know, Mac Jones fan left, to consider that this offseason you guys need to be in the quarterback market? No. We would do a reverse Raiders. What's Raiders that? blaming everything on the quarterback and nothing on the coach. I would flip it around. Why don't you switch up the coaches? We've got a franchise quarterback. Okay. Well, he's, All right. That's Mac Jones is a franchise quarterback? Yeah. Look at the media guide. <laughs> Faces right on him. I mean, what are you talking about? Hey, there he is, him and Judon. Hello, franchise guys. Playing great. Uh, Magic Pistons. They're calling it the Malice at the Little Caesars. No, they're not. No one's calling it that. For Nick Wright, though. No, it wasn't. How many rebounds did he have? Come on. Uh, no. Oh, great job, Kyrie. Actually, it's good. Listen, man, we got 24 home games left on that season ticket package. They are hot right Ooh, now. No, I'm keep saying them. that until. Bruce comes back, in which case I won't talk about them anymore. <laughs> Bronze medal, Alec Burks. What? 32 points mm. on 10 of 11 shooting for Alec Burks. That is actually not the big story from that game. We'll get to that in a moment. Silver medal, DeMar DeRozan. 42, 10 and 5 for a much needed win for the Bulls. And the Bucks gotta get it together. Mm. Uh, for a team that's supposed to win the title, I understand Middleton's been out. You need to tighten it up a bit. And then, of course, the gold medal. Zion Williams. Let's go. The final 14 points of the game, a career-high 43 points, continuously just booming on Rudy Gobert and leading the Pelicans back atop the Western Conference standings. There's the medal stand from last night. Well, here's the medal stand from last night is. in the association. Cool. That's like, a nice I, action shot. Yeah, I was going to say, Burks. Alex Burton's great. I like that. Good, Good job. Him. Welcome to the medal stand. Uh, ugly scene in that game, though. Yeah. Uh, Mo Wagner pushes Killian Hayes, who later comes up to Mo Wagner and hits him in the back of the head. And it looks like Mo Wagner is asleep there on the bench. I'm not a doctor, but it didn't look good. Uh, three players ejected. Nick, what are you expecting from? From the league here. Well, listen, I, I think Killian Hayes is going, going to get a far harsher suspension than you would normally get for that action because of the result of it. And I, listen, I'm not trying to be preachy or anything, but this is a good lesson for like anybody out there that it's not always what you do. Sometimes it is the bad luck of the result of what you do that mm. that is your punishment is determined on that. That's in a lot of walks of life or a lot of things that are, you know, minor acts a lot of people do, but yours, you just rolled the dice wrong. I mean, I think at least six games, really? maybe more. Yeah, yeah maybe more. Because, because and, and Greg, you made the point, it did look like Wagner was like, Already a little woozy from like the initial shove. It's weird. The I, I'm no doctor, and we're obviously watching this from afar. It's an odd scene, but because he ends up being out cold, and people are gonna say it was because Killian hit him, and it probably was. I think it's gonna be a s substantial suspension. Man, man, I, I, I just if you think about how it all transpired, like how it happened. Mo Wagner, he he initiated it. Yep. On the Pistons bench, like you see him almost look like he's out right there. Yeah. And then he gets it. So optics yep. play a, a huge role in this. And right there, he looks like he's he, out. He looked like he's gone. And so I mean, yeah. you got a player retaliating from a push. Like you can't hit him. I'm not condoning yeah. what Killian Hayes did and hitting him in the back of the head. But I, I just. Six games? I think, Wilds, do you think it's going to be more than that? I could see it being more. I, I, I see, like, three kind of headwinds that they're dealing with. One is that you're dealing with a concussion, yeah. most likely, so you have that. Two, it's in Detroit. I, I think that plays a, a part in it. It's like, oh, oh there are people calling it the malice and the little Caesars right. going around. And even when you listen to this, like the announcer, like stay in your seats. So there's that 
specter over the whole thing. And finally, this is another cheap shot retaliation when the person who initiated it got the worst of it. When Mark